Hi, my name is Lacey Tallarico, and I've been in education for 15 years. And although that certainly doesn't make me an expert by any means, I can say that I feel really comfortable communicating with students. However, I do not always feel comfortable communicating with fellow faculty or staff members. As I begin a journey towards working in higher education, I know that this is something that I'm going to have to do probably on an even bigger scale than I've done for the past 15 years. Um, teachers tend to struggle with communicating with coworkers, and there are many reasons for that, all of which I've experienced in my own career. One of the reasons that we struggle to communicate is the pride that we take in the work that we do. Um, our pedagogy is often personal to us. We put our blood, sweat, and tears into our teaching. It's a personal investment. It's a reflection of who we are. We work so hard and devote so much of our intellect and our person to the way that we teach. And it's often really hard to bring that to the table, to share it, to talk about it, to give it to others, um, and be vulnerable and take criticism regarding our ideas or our um, pedagogy, our instructional practices. And so teachers are really protective of what we do, and I have a tendency to be that way as well. Another barrier to communica communication and education is time. Um, just like any other job, teachers are incredibly busy, but I would argue that teachers sometimes are even busier um, than the average worker. Um, we just, we have a lot on our plate. We fill our schedules. We devote so much of our lives to what we do and to our students with grading and planning and writing curriculum that we often don't want to give that time up. We're stingy with our time. And so technology ties into that as well. Technology so often makes communication better, more efficient, faster, easier. And so a lot of times we communicate better with technology, but on the other side of that coin is we often use technology as an excuse not to talk face to face, not to have that meeting, not to talk things out. We would rather send a message or an email or a text. And so those are barriers to communication and education as well. Another thing to consider is the unique situation that teachers are in work-wise. Um, when we go into the workplace, we see and communicate with our students far more than we do with our coworkers. We see them really infrequently compared to how often we see our students. And so we can talk to our students all day. We can communicate with them almost flawlessly. We have a system, we have a routine, but when it comes to talking with our coworkers and sitting down and actually having good communication with them, we struggle with that sometimes because it's not like a typical job where you see your coworkers every single day or you talk to them every single day. That's just not the way teaching works. All of these factors are issues I've dealt with in my own career. And so I know that as I go into higher ed, I have to make a plan and I need to have some strategies to communicate well. So I've come up with four simple things that I know that I can do individually to make myself a better communicator for my students and for my fellow colleagues. The first one is pretty simple, but it's something I do struggle with, and it's planning. Just planning communication, devoting time to it, investing in it, putting it on my agenda, putting it in my planner, setting a time for it, and going prepared. Sometimes we want to brush it off or make it a 10-minute meeting or cancel at the last minute or send a text or an email instead of investing in the 30 minutes, the hour, whatever it takes to really talk to our colleagues. And so I'm going to make that a priority. Put it in my planner and reach out to them. If they don't reach out to me or if it's not enforced and meetings aren't scheduled, reach out to them instead and try to pursue relationships with my coworkers. The second thing that I know I can do is not to isolate so much. Teaching can be really isolating and sometimes we can feel like we're on an island. And what's funny about teachers, the ironic thing that we do is we're constantly looking for resources online and in books and conferences and all of these places that we seek new knowledge and information, we forget and we often overlook the resources that are right next door to us or right down the hall. And so one of the things that I want to do in higher ed is to remember that my coworkers are resources. We may disagree. They may be really different than me, but they bring something of value to education. They're there for a reason. And so what I want to do is treat them as a resource. Don't isolate, but reach out. Go to them with questions. Um, write things down. Take advice from them. Seek them before I seek books or seek the internet. Ask them how they do it. And so I think that that's something simple that I could do. 
The third thing that I think we all struggle with as teachers, I know I do, is that we have this natural tendency because we are teachers um, to believe that we're the smartest one in the room, um, to want to take charge, to be the leader, to be the talker. So I think in a group setting, when you're collaborating, especially with curriculum, something that's touchy with teachers, to not be like the teacher in the room, to sit down and show humility, to listen, to remember that we're equals. And while you're, you may be the leader in the classroom and you may be the smartest one in the classroom, it may be your job to dictate and to lead in the classroom, which is my tendency to want to do. When you're sitting down and working together, you've got to let go of the reins and listen and take advice from others. They all bring something valuable, like I said before. The fourth thing that I think that I can do is just like I want to treat my coworkers as resources, I need to be a resource to them. Sometimes we're so protective and guarded of our ideas or what we bring to the classroom. And so I'm going to make it a priority to, anytime I collaborate, to bring something, bring an idea, bring a comment, bring an opinion, a respectful one, um, and share it. Sometimes we want to cower away and hide away and we, we resist talking either because we're quiet or we don't want to be there or we think that our ideas won't be valued. But if we bring something, that begins to create communication and conversation with our coworkers. So bring an idea, not just bring it, but share it. Be a resource to my coworkers just like I want them to be for me. As far as conflict goes, it's inevitable. Inevitable conflict, it's just any job, any career, but especially with teachers who invest so much into what we do, we're protective of it. We want to do things our way. We just do. Our classroom is special to us. And so I think with conflict, the, the number one thing is to remember that we all worked really hard to get where we are. We worked hard, and we gave so much of ourselves, and we are where we are for a reason. Um, we're not there by accident. Every teacher is different, but that's so good for our students. We all bring something different to the table, and we're all valuable. And so when we have those moments of disagreement or of conflict, or we have different ideologies or theories about education and curriculum and planning, it's sometimes better to remember humility and that we all are there for a reason and it's good to come together. And so sometimes that means walking away. Um, sometimes that means listening instead of speaking. Sometimes that means being really guarded about your tone. But I think humility is the key and valuing one another, even when we disagree and we know we may never agree, um, but we can be respectful. And I think that's important. Overall, I think these four little strategies, planning, giving it priority, showing humility, and being a resource for my teammates um, will help me communicate better, and that's my goal in higher education.